After all that, you're wondering how to hit the reset button on your gut. Dr. Joey is here with five major things you can do. But of course, Dr. Joey, the hardest part is getting started. Yes, well, the implementation factor, that's my next book, because I can tell people what to do, but the implementation factor is tricky for them. So let's start small baby steps. Okay. Okay, number one, the American Gut Project has shown plant diversity is very good for gut biome. Mm -hmm. So they say at least 30 different types of fruits and vegetables per week. That's tricky for people. That so is tricky. If we can just start looking around our grocery store and eating a few different foods, especially in kids that they're not used to, mm -hmm. that's why smoothies are king. Mm -hmm. You can sneak anything into a smoothie. Do what you can as far as plant diversity. Got it, all right. Okay, fiber. Good fiber is really important. It's the broom that sweeps things out. We want people to have daily bowel movements, and that's a whole other show, but we want make, to make sure we have enough fiber. So ground flax seeds or chia seeds, whole grains, quality whole grains. They can be gluten-free or they can be regular whole but grains. But not whole grains in bread. Who says bread's bad? Doesn't bread contain a whole bunch of sugar and gluten? The right type of bread. So we have to know what the type of bread, and we can do whole grains. So we don't have to say absolute. So, um, and, and, and we need, the body runs on glucose. The body doesn't run on ketones. So we Got need it. some grains, some fruits, some vegetables to keep that glucose up in our body. What about sourdough bread? I've heard sourdough doesn't raise your insulin levels. Is that true? Yes, and sourdough is higher in enzymatic activity, so it's easier to digest. So people who are hardcore gluten-free still can't have it, but people who can have gluten, yeah, sourdough's great. All Delicious, right. too. Interesting. All right, what's the third? I see you got sauerkraut here. Yeah, so we want some fermented foods. They do help with that microbiome, with that bacterial um, uh, gut lining. So um, fermented foods, sauerkraut, miso, kimchi, you know, you can put it on a sandwich. You can have some yogurt. So if you're okay with dairy too, yogurt is a great option. Dairy is interesting because people will say dairy causes inflammation. As far as dairy goes, if you're okay with it, by all means, you okay. can get your calcium from it. If you're not okay with it, if there's an autoimmune condition, if you have elevated inflammatory reaction, it is a good idea, cut it out. You know, we were talking about sourdough. And what's fascinating, it's one of these superfoods in that it is one of the highest probiotic foods. And I would agree with you that the vast majority of breads you find wrapped in plastic sold on the regular shelf are bad for people. They're high in sugar, they're high in gluten, and when we talk about breads that are so-called good, I personally have found that the term whole grains is completely abused in our market. <laughs> you know, I can go to, the, I'm not kidding, I go to the cereal aisle, and that peanut butter bowl cereal, guess what? That's labeled a whole grain. <laughs> what the true. F? Seriously? Yeah. Like, that's a whole grain? And yet, that's where people are taking their education So you want to look for the word sprouted. So if you sprout a grain, yeah. you've increased the enzymatic activity as well. So okay. sprouted grain, whole grain bread, it's like this whole new lexicon you have to, to but learn. it's confusing, it's right? Confusing. So it's confusing. And hard. people, I don't, the pile of what to do yeah. to be healthy is getting higher. People are confused, and yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah, absolutely. What the F, by the way, does not stand for what everybody here seems to think it is. It's what yeah. the food? Yeah, yeah. But that's what it stands for. I need think. Okay, what's step four? Step four is superfoods. So there are certain superfoods. It's not just sort of a, a catch phrase thing to say. Lemons are superfoods. They help with digestion. Cilantro is a fantastic for detoxifying. Leafy greens are terrific. So the more that you can get things like sweet potatoes in the diet, these foods contain phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are nutrients that help fight off disease. Food isn't like medicine. Food is a form of medicine. So we love food, we eat food. But when you are sick, when you need to improve health, we can use food as medicine. And step number five, what is it? Step number five is hydration. So, so many people are walking around and they're drinking too much coffee and they're having not enough water and if, I I'm fundamentally believe if you're not properly hydrated, I can't get you there. Mm -hmm. And so um, proper hydration is two liters of water per day. And a lot of people are just, for whatever reason, I have a lot of teachers as clients, they don't want to run to the bathroom in the middle of the day. They're just not hydrating properly. All right, Dr. Joey, Dr. Zenley, Dr. Gorfinkel, and Drina, thank you all for taking the time. And that is it for us today. Hope you've learned something. We'll see you next time. For now, it's time to zoom out.